Good morning to everyone. And for me, this is a bit of a homecoming of sorts. When I was a, uh, when I was a child, I grew up not so far from here in Scarborough. And I spent an incredible amount of time as a kid having lots of fun at the Science Center. So it makes it even more meaningful for me to be here this morning and talk to you about what I consider to be the most profound and the most exciting reality in the world today, and that is the power of one. Now, no doubt there are lots of different definitions and interpretations of what the power of one is, but from my perspective, the power of one today, unlike any time before in the history of the world, allows one individual to have an incredibly profound and meaningful impact on whatever it is they are passionate about. Now, I'm lucky because the first exposure I had to the power of one was through my mom. And my mom is an incredible lady. She uh, was a single mom for the majority of the time of my childhood. She essentially raised our family on a starting salary of $14,000 a year. And she wasn't from Toronto. So she had a very thin support network here. Despite all of that, my mom had this incredible life philosophy that what she was going to do is have a little bit of positive impact on every single person she encountered. And she did that in some pretty simple ways. She provided a shoulder to cry on. She gave great advice. She was always there to lend a helping hand. And she was just a really happy person that made others feel good a bit interacting with her. And that's the way she embodied the power of one. Now, these are my dogs. I have, on the left, Smudge, my big Bernese mountain dog, and on the right, Beatty, my tiny little chihuahua. And the lesson I learned from my mom is that it really matters less the size of the impact that you have. What matters more is just the fact that you're having impact. And there's no doubt in my mind that this world is going to be a much better place if we have a group of people that are interested in focusing on sort of chihuahua-sized small bites of impact, and we have others who are focused on big, global, Bernese mountain dog, big chunks of impact. And that's really what's going to make the world go around. Now, I remember really clearly being in grade nine in a math class of a terrific teacher named Mr. Renzetti. And Mr. Renzetti spent the entire class debating and then proving that the fastest way to get between any two points was a straight line. And that is absolutely positively true when it comes to math, but absolutely false when it comes to life. Because the one truth about life is that it is not linear. And so when I think about life and all the richness of the experiences I've had and all the meaningful experiences that I've been able to encounter, it is because life has been random and life has been circuitous and life has been full of coincidence. And really it is in those ends of those curves that you're gonna find your ability to have the greatest amount of impact. I would also say that it's important in life to have fun and be foolish and never lose your childlike enthusiasm for life. And this is my son and I on Halloween, Gene Simmons Sr. and Gene Simmons Jr. Now, the one truism that I think is most exciting in the world in which we live today is that technology is fundamentally changing everything. And that is especially true if you are someone that wants to have impact. Because at the highest levels, what technology is doing is technology has democratized influence. And said another way, technology has really leveled the playing field. And so it's no longer about your gender, and it's no longer about your age, or your ethnicity, or your religion, or what geography you live in. And it is no longer about your parents' last name, and how much money they have, and what school you went to. What it is about, it's about a meritocracy. It's about you using your brains, to identify a big idea and take that idea and make it a reality. And this is fundamentally different than it was 20 years ago when there was a direct correlation between your ability to have impact and the amount of capital or the amount of money you had access to. Today, the premium is placed on intellectual capital, not necessarily financial capital. Case in point, a 12-year-old friend of mine from Toronto named Mark Menarn. Mark received two really unfortunate pieces of news last year. Both his grandmother and his mother were both diagnosed with cancer. And so Mark decided he was going to take something that he loved, hockey, and he was going to use it to fight something that he hated, cancer. 
And so what Mark did was he created a one-day event called Minor Hockey Fights Cancer. And he used the power of social media, YouTube and Twitter and Facebook to get the word out and get people excited about what he was doing. And then he used online fundraising tools to generate funds for the cause. And at the end of his one-day event, this 12-year-old Torontonian almost single-handedly spearheaded the raising of over $200,000 for the Canadian Cancer Society, truly embodying what it means to live the power of one. And when I hear stories like Mark's and others like him, it brings me back to this motto that my mom would constantly say to me, I want to tattoo this on your forehead. And that is, if it is to be, it is up to me. We cannot live in a world where we stand idly and look over our left shoulder and then look over our right shoulder and wonder who's going to do it. Because today you're going to do it. Because if it is to be, it needs to be up to me. And in my life, whenever I've experienced impact and meaningfulness and joy, there have been these three constant pillars that have been there. One is the sense of insatiable curiosity. How do I go and uncover life's great mysteries and find answers to life's great questions? And I would tell you, God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. And that's because along that path, you should spend twice as much time actively listening than you do actively talking. There's no doubt that the things I have learned the most have come from listening and not talking. And if you're really curious and expose yourself to lots of different opportunities and meet lots of different people, you are going to find something you're passionate about. Because you're not born with passion. Passion isn't embedded into your DNA. It is something you are turned on to when you're exposed to different types of people in different types of situations. And the beauty of passion is that passion is contagious. When your friends and family member and colleagues see that you are passionate about something, they in turn are more inclined to be passionate about what it is that interests them. And it might not be the same thing you're passionate about, but that doesn't matter. Because you have motivated them and inspired them to be passionate. And we all want to be great in our lives. And in order to be great, we need to be dealing with things that matter. And the only things that matter in our lives are going to be the things we are passionate about. Second pillar is this concept of be bold. Think big, take risks. Imagine if five years ago, you would have talked to a young boy in Stratford, and that boy would have said to you, my goal in this decade is to be the biggest pop star the world has ever seen. And you would have probably said, whoa, why don't you concentrate on being the biggest pop star in Stratford? And then if you're really good, maybe you could be the biggest pop star in Canada. And imagine if he would have listened to those critics and those naysayers. Imagine that what that would have done to his life and to his career. No doubt Justin Bieber thought big. And the good news for everybody in this room is that it's never been easier to think boldly. With all of the connections we have powered through the technology that we have access to, we literally can sit in our basements and have profound global impact without ever, without ever leaving our houses. And the third thing, this third pillar is a bias for action. The ability not only to think, but the ability to do. The hardest part in finding something you're passionate about and making a difference is taking that first step. And I have this wonderful cousin who is a young entrepreneur and did very well. And when he sold his company, his employees had a going away party for him. And at the going away party, they gave him a walking stick. And on that walking stick was engraved, you were a really good talker, but more importantly, you were the best walker. And I thought to myself, what an incredible life compliment to be identified as somebody that really did, at the end of the day, walk the walk. And if you're going to walk the walk and you're going to spend time doing anything, what I'd encourage you to do is do it while competing really hard. Right? Play to win. Mediocrity is not an answer or an option. You know, my mom used to have this great poem that started like this, and I still remember it to this day. My son, beware of good enough. It is not made of sterling stuff. So if you're going to do something, do it to the best of your abilities. And no question, when all of these pillars are present, you are going to realize a tremendous amount of success. But what I'm hoping is you also realize a tremendous amount of failure. Because failure, no doubt, is something that we need to embrace and we need to learn from. Because if you're not failing, it means you're not pushing the envelope hard enough. And if you're not pushing the envelope hard enough, you never are going to realize the impact that you so richly deserve. 
Now, all of this is great and important, but there's one component to our lives that needs to be present in order for us to truly live the power of one. And that is the presence of trust. The opportunity and ability to live life and savor things like loyalty and honesty and integrity. If you take a look at all of the community leaders today that have the greatest amount of impact, those community leaders have gotten there because they are trusted. And in my life, although I'm termed the business guy, the most meaningful things I've been involved with, the richest days and the brightest days in my life have all come from the community service that I perform. Whether it's volunteering, or whether it's fundraising, or whether it's the boards I sit on, that's where I get the greatest joy in my life, and that's where I hope at the end of my life I have had the most impact. And there's only one real obstacle you're going to face along the way of experiencing and realizing great impact and embodying this thing we call the power of one. And then one obstacle is going to be called fear. And I have to ask myself, what am I not doing today because I am afraid? And what I would encourage you to do is ask yourself the same question. What would I do if I wasn't afraid? And make a list. And every month or every year, try to st strike off 50% of the things on that list. And you won't believe what that does for your ability to have profound impact. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. The path to having great impact and leading a life that is rich and fulfilling and meaningful is hard. And it takes a lot of time, and it's busy. And you're going to get lots of people that ask you about, how are you doing with work-life balance? And what I'll tell you is there is no such thing as work-life balance. It is a myth. And if you chase it, you will be eternally disappointed. In my life, what I try to focus on is this thing called work-life rhythm. Because it is clear to me there will be some points in my life when I'm spending an inordinate amount of time at work, 18 hours a day, six days a week for many weeks on end. And then there will be other times in my life when I have the opportunity and the luxury to spend more time with my friends and at the gym and traveling. And it really is the cadence of that rhythm that I spend a lot of time thinking about. I never think about work-life balance. And so let's step back for a second and ask ourselves, why are we even talking about any of this? Why does it matter that we are excited and fired up to lead a life of impact? And I think really the reason is because we all acknowledge that we're not on this earth forever. We're all here for a very finite period of time. And so if we're going to be here for a finite period of time, how do we leave this planet in a state that is way better than it was when we found it? And here's an exercise that I undertake every year that I encourage you to do the same. Sit down with a piece of paper and write down on that piece of paper what it is you hope to accomplish in your life. Essentially, it's a form of a eulogy. What is it you hope to accomplish? What it is you hope to do? Where do you want to have the most impact? And what do you hope your legacy to be? And then use that piece of paper as the guardrails for your life as you go forward. You will find it incredibly empowering and also incredibly accurate. And so let me conclude by saying this, that I get really excited when I have the ability to talk to rooms full of young people because young people are very much at the beginning of this incredible journey to impact. You have your whole life in front of you, and my wish is that that life is full of profound and meaningful impact. And so here's what I'd encourage you to do. I'd encourage you to be really curious and go find something you're passionate about quickly and make sure that you use that passion to embrace and magnify your own unique powers of one. Thanks very much.